We'll get started off with Mr. Salter. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Salter. I'm the special agent in charge for the Atlanta Field Division. Um, today, uh, we are announcing what, what we consider a victory in, in the war on drugs here in Atlanta. I'm pleased to announce that yesterday on uh, the Atlanta Field Division of the Drug Enforcement Administration and our partners from Atlanta Police Department conducted a uh, search warrant uh, for a methamphetamine conversion lab with our clandestine methamphetamine team. Um, as a result of that search, um, at 1931 Compton Drive in Atlanta, Georgia, um, a large quantity, 50 kilograms of methamphetamine was seized and also 14 kilograms of heroin, which was um, not expected. The, uh, the heroin was secreted and candied, uh, much like candy that's purchased and, and, and sold in Mexico. And uh, it's, it's here. We have some on example that you can see later. Um, one suspect was arrested, and as this is an ongoing investigation, our, our, uh, our partnerships with Atlanta PD and, and certainly Fulton County District Attorney's Office has never been better. And, and this is just an example of how when we put our resources together to keep our community safe, that's exactly what we'll do. The men and women that worked this worked uh, many, many hours exhaustively and they did a great job. So again, as I started this off, this, this is truly a victory um, and we're not done. The, the bottom line is when we, when we see this amount of uh, methamphetamine and heroin, we realize that Atlanta is a major uh, hub for this, uh, these drugs and we will do everything we can to keep the community safe within this, this area, not only here but throughout the United States. So my compliments to the men and women both from DEA, Atlanta PD, thank you for your efforts and, and, I, and I'm eagerly waiting for better and more results here in the near future, but thank you. I'll turn it over to Chief Jones. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, as Dan has uh, said, it's really through the partnerships that we're able to uh, identify this particular uh, situation where we've had these drugs in this particular community, and uh, it's that partnership and working close with our narcotics team three, working with the DEA, enabled us to be able to identify uh, the, the, the location and go in and take this uh, group down. Uh, we realize that we cannot solve the, the problem alone as a law enforcement agency, so we partner with the federal entities on a frequent basis in order to deal with the narcotics issues in our city. Uh, as we talk about Atlanta being a, a potential hub for narcotics, uh, that we, that's even more the reason why we have to partner with our federal partners to be able to identify uh, those individuals who may be trafficking or, or trying to create or, uh, develop drugs in our community to uh, get those drugs off our streets. So we, we, we think this is a success. Uh, this is the second one uh, lab, meth lab, that we've been able to take down in the past six weeks. And uh, it's really through the partnerships with the federal government, uh, the federal agencies, that we've been able to do that. We'll continue to work uh, to do that as we identify them, and identify these uh, meth labs, other drug locations in our city, in order to make our city a safe place for all of our citizens to be able to reside and feel they can you know, live and work and play uh, with their families and their communities. So I just want to thank uh, Dan for their partnership and, and the willingness to work together to be able to resolve this particular situation. Thank you. Agent Saltis, we ask you a couple questions? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you don't mind. How, how unusual is it to find heroin pack, packaged in this way and uh, hidden in candy? Well, I think, I think for years that these organizations have used a number of ways to conceal their, their importation of heroin and all drugs into the United States. This is, uh, I have not seen this candy approach yet. Um, I'm not saying it hasn't been seen before, but when we see this kind of uh, packaging, it's a great concern to us because obviously, um, you know, candy is appealing to, to young and small children, and that's a concern to us. Now, do I believe that this specifically was going to children in Atlanta? No, I don't believe it. I believe they were concealing it to bring it into the U.S. as such. However, it's still concerning us if, if something was laying around and, and a young child were to get their hands on it. Was, was, do you believe that this came in by air, or do you think it came in from Mexico? I'm no, it, it, it certainly came overland. from Mexico overland, yes. It did, yeah. And um, how, how long do you think this, this distribution, this, I guess it's a manufacturing distribution for meth and a, and a heroin distribution operation at this house, how long has this been going on, and how did you all get tipped off to it? Well, we developed the information through, through investigative efforts with both Atlanta PD and DEA. It's something that um, we, we have an, a vested interest in the Atlanta metropolitan area for the increase in heroin 
abuse, and we've started targeting some of these areas, and, and consequently, consequently came upon the information about a meth conversion lab. Now, a meth conversion lab is, is, is just that. It's methamphetamine and liquid that's transported in liquid into the United States, and we call it a conversion lab because at that point they convert it to a methamphetamine hydrochloride, which you see the shards in the, in the white little Tupperware containers. What's the, I'm sorry, what's the estimated street value of the 50 kilos? Street of value? And the heroin altogether, would you say? 8.1 million. 8.1 million with altogether. For total? Yeah, the street value. We, we, we document everything in our books wholesale, um, but we're seeing an increase in heroin abuse in this country. There, you're seeing a, uh, an increase of almost 70% of heroin seizures along the U.S. border, which is a great concern to the rest of the United States because they're, with the prescription drug abuse uh, problem, you're seeing a lot uh, more people being uh, exposed to heroin. Is it easier for them to, con to, to bring it in in liquid form? Is that the reason why it's brought in liquid form? I believe so. I mean, it's just another method, and, it, and certainly we've seen a lot of it um, here in the right past probably, what, three years that, that the liquid is coming in. It can come in in a gas can. It can come in in, in, uh, in, in vehicles. It, it is, it's concealed a lot of times as, as liquid as, uh, as beer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's probably easier to come in as liquid. Do you believe these operations that you busted, the one you mentioned a week ago, have a direct link in heroin, direct link to large drug cartels in Mexico? Uh, we, we have indication to believe that, yes, when you have a seizure of this size, absolutely it's going to have a link to a Mexican drug trafficking organization in Mexico, based out of Mexico. Uh, you know, we're not a border town. Um, so is it, why, why, how, where is it, come, where is it coming from, you think? Is it from like the Texas area? Or? Well, I, I just recently relocated here from Dallas and I asked the same <laughs> question. It, it, uh, the best we know is Atlanta is one day's drive from the southwest border. We're also one day drive from the east coast. It's a, it's a major transshipment area the, to the east coast and also to further south. So it is a, a prime location, the highway in the, uh, the uh, roads are conducive to uh, trafficking and moving this stuff through our city. What would, I, and I asked someone about this earlier, each one of those boxes of candy, what did that represent in terms of weight of? We're, we're, a kilo, a kilogram. Each box? Yeah, I believe so. And how many boxes were found there? 14. 14 boxes? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Now, the purpose of them putting them in the, in, the, in the candy, that would be for when they're crossing border patrol, crossing through customs, or well, why would they do that? Well, it's, I mean, it's an easy, I mean, if they have a shipment on a large truck of Mexican candy, and obviously it looks like yeah. candy, and not only just for, for importation, but also for transport from the border through the states to uh, ultimately where it was seized here in Atlanta. So it's conceivable they could have gotten through customs on the Mexican border with that, that stuff there? Well, somehow or other came across, um, yeah. there, it, but it, it very well could have been concealed in a legitimate load. As, as you know, the, 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 pores, the border's porous, and there's a number of uh, seizures daily from, um, uh, as they come across the border. Do you believe that this was, that these drugs were going to another city, or do you believe that they were going to be sold here in Atlanta? At this time, I don't have any information that could relate to that. I'm just glad it's off the street wherever it was going. But certainly for, for the Atlanta community, it's certainly a, uh, a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions of the chief, uh, of Mr. Salter? Because you will have an opportunity to, to, for a specific town bites afterwards. So go on once, go on twice. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you very much. <clears throat>